അനുരാധ റാവു എം ഡി എൻ സി യു ഐ എസ് ബി ഐ മ്യൂച്വൽ ഫണ്ട് അതർ ഡിഗ്നിറ്ററീസ് പ്രസൻറ്റ് ഹിയർ ടുഡേ ആൻഡ് റെപ്രസെൻറ്റേറ്റീവ്സ് ഫ്രം ദി എക്സെൻറ്റഡ് ട്രസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് മൈ കൊളീഗ്സ് ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ദിസ് എ വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻ്റ് ഗ്യാദറിങ് ഓഫ് എക്സ്പേർട്ട്സ് ഹു ആർ വർക്കിംഗ് ഇൻ ദ ഏരിയ ഓഫ് ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് പെൻഷൻ ആൻഡ് റിട്ടയർമെൻറ്റ് ഫണ്ട്സ് ഇൻ ദ കൺട്രി I am happy to be associated with this event. At the, uh, as uh, requested by SBI Mutual Fund, I would like to congratulate them for organizing this knowledge sharing platform for professionals working in this area so that uh, the performance in this area becomes better and better. As you know, social security in India is receiving greater attention nowadays. The importance of social security for all the people. Government have realized this importance and trying to cover all the people with the social security measures in the country unlike many other countries today we are trying to do a uh, trying to do expansion and coverage universal social security coverage is our aim for this it requires a quantitative and qualitative expansion quantitative in the sense uh, total number of people we are covering under social security need to be expanded just now epfo covers around 3.76 crore people regular members including all the extended trusts put together and total corpus is maybe 11 lakh crores or something like like that figure but we need to uh, they say in the formal sector maybe 7 or 8 percent workers are there but however in the formal sector itself we are not able to cover all the people maybe exact numbers are not available maybe 2 crore or 3 crore people are outside uh, the net of social security even in the formal sector and informal sector may uh, there is not much of social security as of now so that is the situation of the country today which would require a great uh, expansion and focus on covering all the eligible workers in all sectors with some kind of social security as otherwise when our demographic dividend turns negative in future we will find it difficult to support the aging population at a later time maybe 25 years or 30 years 35 years later therefore government is uh, focusing on this area in a very very significant manner in expanding the coverage of social security with work of all the workers with this we only epfo has launched a enrollment campaign during the three months now it is going on with the, from 1st january to march 31st with the, announcing an amnesty scheme for coverage of past workers and if new workers employees are covered then they are eligible for benefits under the prime minister's rozgar prosga prosahan yojana according to which 8.33% of the employees contribution will be paid by government of india in, on behalf of the worker this is this contribution which the government of india makes for 3 years for all new workers is in addition to the 1.16% of the contribution which is made by government of india in pension funds already there is that is a second subsidy and a third subsidy in this pension system in the epfo system is government is contributing around 2500 crores every year to give a minimum pension of 1000 rupees to every pensioner at present the epfo is distributing pension for around 57 lakh people every month but this and this number is growing therefore though we are taking certain steps for coverage there is, it is time that we ensure that no worker is left out of the ambit of social security and they get benefit and the second aspect on which we are stressing apart from quantitatively uh, quantitative expansion is to improve the quality of our schemes to facilitate the employees and work employees or because they are the this is a tripartite body employer employee government social security is to be attained by cooperation of all the people therefore in order to create more empl employment employees also need to be facilitated at the same time workers more and more benefits need to be given with this we only epfo is trying to formulate more and more schemes to give more benefits like housing or medical benefit on retirement etc for which we are uh, thinking, 
trying to formulate better schemes to benefit the workers and give them better social security. And at the same time, we have reduced the administrative charge for the employees. From 1.25%, it has been reduced to, earlier it was reduced to 0.85% in 2014. Now we have reduced it again to 0.65%. So the administrative charge which EPFO is collecting is going down. So at the same time, this is the aspect of quantitative expansion which we are dealing with in social security. Qualitatively, our professional management needs to become, is becoming better and better. And it, it should be so in case of all exempted trusts as well. As far as EPFO is concerned, we have we, we are becoming, we, have, uh, we are doing digitization in a very big way. So we have launched a, a software portal recently in the month of uh, end of December. From January onwards we are receiving for the new ECR, electronic child income return, and also UAN and also PMRPY. These services we have launched uh, new. According to these services now, uh, any employer makes credit to EPFO, then that uh, Chalani is prepared, credit is made through his bank, electronic credit, and he gets a receipt instantaneously, immediately, and the worker's accounts get credited immediately, and the worker gets a message, SMS also immediately. So the entire cycle is completed. The worker gets his notification immediately. So this uh, kind of software improvement we have made, and now we are moving further, and to facilitate the uh, claim settlements by the workers, we are introducing better softwares so that uh, this is done in a very uh, seamless and uh, very streamlined manner so that the worker doesn't have to waste his uh, valuable working days for the purpose of getting any kind of benefit from EPFO. So we are introducing Aadhaar. We have notified Aadhaar as mandatory for EPFO and we are introducing Aadhaar based identification of workers so that all their benefits can be transferred to them based on other identification to their bank account. So that kind of digital uh, 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 benefit uh, transfer and claim settlement we are working on and shortly we will be coming out with these kind of administrative improvements. Apart from this kind of improvement, as you know, all this uh, sec uh, social security administration, this, it involves uh, you know, collection of funds, then management uh, and investment of funds and then claim settlement and, uh, and, and giving the benefits to the workers. There are, these are the three key segments, areas in which professional management and may latest use of latest uh, digital technology will help. So in all these areas we have to progress simultaneously. So in this uh, second uh, leg of this process which involves investment and management of funds. This uh, uh, conference is focusing on that area where SBI mutual fund has uh, come up, uh, wants to share or they, they would like to share their expertise and knowledge in this area with uh, the, all the uh, uh, people involved in the administration of uh, the security, social security funds. So I would like to thank them for this opportunity and uh, uh, congratulated them for sharing this information with all our uh, exempt funds. See, as far as investment is concerned, EPFO is following the guidelines of the Ministry of Finance as each one of you is doing. So we are within the uh, regulatory framework of the Government of India as far as investment is concerned, to, the, to what extent and in what kind of instruments investment takes place is controlled by the Ministry of Finance. But as far as EPFO is concerned, within the ambit of the Ministry of Finance guidelines, our Central Board of Trustees have made certain further decisions. Uh, maybe uh, with an angle to improve security of our investment further. This is more in uh, line with the concerns of our uh, employees' representatives. The Ministry of Finance guidelines permit uh, five categories of investments. But EPFO is basically investing only in three categories as of now. So uh, in short term debt, debt instruments and uh, asset backed uh, kind of structures we, we are not investing in EPFO as of now. But uh, uh, since uh, last year 2016 August 2015 August we started investment 
in the uh, equity in, in terms of ETF, exchange traded funds. Uh, last one year we have been investing in this. Uh, uh, actually, all investment, as you know, is a is an optimization of, of risk and uh, return. However, in the this this is a very very uh, kind of not a perfectly mathematical or perfectly rational kind of sector. This investment, especially when it comes to equity and uh, related areas, calculation of risk, exact assessment of risk and the prospects of any particular paper in the times to come uh, are you know subject to speculation and subject to a lot of uh, uh, volatility and, and volatility is not exactly risk. Volatility and risk also need to be distinguished. Uh, a market, volatile market need not necessarily be a risky market in that sense. So, but since we are dealing with the uh, pension funds of the people who are earning very small salaries. EPFO's uh, main uh, clientele is below 15,000 uh, uh, salary workers. And therefore, the risk, uh, minimum risk and the long term security of the funds is a very major concern in the EPFO investment. So, therefore, the Government of India has prescribed most of the investments or at least a substantial part of the investment in government securities or corporate bonds which are relatively secure, which are uh, with higher ratings like uh, AAA or AA plus etc. If it is a corporate bond. Governments, sovereign bond, bonds and all, definitely they have more security but uh, uh, off late the trend in the market is that their uh, rates are coming down substantially. Central government uh, securities have come down to lower levels like below 7%, 6.75% etc. And the corporate bond market and other uh, uh, you know, secured investments have also moved down in tandem. Therefore, EPFO decided and to explore uh, investments like ETF, where there may be a little bit of risk more, but the returns are always better. Because a portfolio investment, uh, when there is a variety of investment, when there is a diversity of investment, uh, of course, that is also one of the factors which mitigates or reduces risk. Instead of putting all the investments in one basket, if there is proper choice of multi different types of instruments, that itself can reduce the risk of portfolio, investment portfolio. Taking this in into consideration, APFO has decided to invest, invest in exchange traded funds. As of now, the decision of the CBT is that we will invest 10% in this exchange traded fund market. Since we invest 1,30,000 crores every year, so this 10% comes to 13,000 crores. That is what we are putting in the equity, the ETF this year. Now, other, uh, most of our ETF other funds are going to uh, central government securities or corporate bond areas. There, uh, however, in this ETF market nowadays, uh, since uh, the uh, GSEC market and corporate bond, bonds market etc. are going down, uh, it is generally felt and predicted that especially with the government's uh, you know, pro proactive and reformatory measures like uh, uh, GST and uh, such uh, uh, economic measures, this market, this ETF investment might uh, fare better and better in future. With this angle only, ETF, uh, uh, CBT has decided to put 10% funds in the ETF. Now, our exempt funds are not bound by the restrictions put by the Central Board of CBT. They are bound only by the regulations of the Ministry of Finance. So most likely you, uh, our fund, exempted trust may be investing in all the permitted five financial sec sectors, uh, including short-term debt, debt instruments and also your um, uh, this asset backed funds, etc. But however, what we have observed, in term, what, what I would like to tell our exempt trust is that this management of this exempt trust is under greater scrutiny and review now. There, there, the parliamentary committee on labor has conducted two long sessions only on exempt trust recently, last month and the month before last. The main focus was on how professionally are exempt trusts being managed. The committee was very concerned with this aspect of 
management of exempted trusts. The questions are whether the trusts are able to trans transfer the money of the workers in a timely manner to the trust fund, whether it is properly accounted and audited every year, whether these funds are invested in a timely manner in the as per the guidelines prescribed and in a professional manner optimizing risk and return and whether having invested these amounts these returns and the proper interest is declared every year which should be at least more than what EPFO gives and finally having uh, invested the funds and having obtained the returns whether claim settlement is happening within the prescribed time limits. Now the time limit of claim settlement is within 20 days, EPFO is doing, but most of the claims are settled within 10 days. And we hope to introduce online claim settlement mechanisms, where if somebody gives Aadhaar ID, we would like to disperse claim within a day. So that is a target which we are try, trying to put. So in all these aspects of management of funds, whether it be collection of funds or deployment of funds or claim settlements, we would like to see that all the exempted trusts are very highly and professionally managed and up to date with their records. And because what we are going to do is we, we would like to put some software, some good software which we are working on and we, we would like to put it in the, in the next month in March where we assess the performance of the exempted funds and when then we, we should be able to get performance and put it into public domain. How best the exempted fun funds are doing in the management of the funds allotted to them, how they are able to perform in all these aspects which I mentioned. Therefore, it is very, very important that you adopt professional management in all these areas. Because otherwise, because this involves a little, little bit of, uh, you know, uh, attention, effort and uh, uh, activity. Perhaps what, we, what the parliamentary committee was thinking was that if it's a very small fund, a very small trust with say 20 people, 25 people, 50, 100 and all that, employees, then the committee expressed the reservations as to whether they will be able to manage all these professionally, properly, etc. So the committee was not of the, was of the view that if it is a very small trust, why exemption should be given, etc. So based on this, our uh, subcommittee of the CBT on exemption made a sitting and they have recommended that uh, in future only workers with uh, a, a trust with 500 workers and with a minimum corpus of 100 crores only need to be exempted. Otherwise very, very small trusts and all uh, with 50-20 uh, employees and with uh, a few 1 or 2 crores etc. They will not be able to do all these uh, aspects of trust management in a very, very professional manner. So therefore, it is very important to review the working because in the, in the months to come, I can tell you that uh, your uh, activities, your performance will be under greater scrutiny, not only by EPFO as the regulator of exempted funds, but also by the public and your own workers because we would like to be transparent in your operations. Just like we are trying to improve the management of uh, the retirement uh, EPFO funds, and trying to be very transparent in our operations. We would like to see that all exempted funds also are very transparent in the management of funds and they do it in a very, very professional manner. Therefore, it is important that you improve the management of funds, not only management, all the three areas of fund management which you need to focus, whether it be collection, whether it be deployment or whether it be your claim settlement. All these areas you need to come with a greater professional management and capability and be and have a transparent operation. We will not permit that audit is not conducted for the past three years, report is not given, audit report is not available and this kind of opacity in your uh, activities cannot be sustained at all and the parliamentary committee has taken a very very serious view of this matter. So therefore, uh, the, this uh, management of funds, you have to follow the guidelines, but within the guidelines, you need to be very professionally managing the funds such that you maximize the returns with the minimum of risk and the funds are secured and the, when the people retire, they are made available uh, in time to the workers. 
So with this view, I hope this, uh, this, uh, this discussion here, the conference here and the expert opinions here will help you to formulate your strategy, at least in the area of uh, fund deployment. The other areas, uh, you have to work on better digitization depending on your uh, number of workers in your trust. You need to make it more and more electronic so that the workers are, uh, you know, they are able to see the investment. I don't know whether in all the ex exempted funds now. Our aim, as I said, is to see that the moment the employer makes a credit, SMS has to come to the worker. So that kind of system is what EPFO is uh, looking at. So I don't know whether this kind of uh, transparency of investment, uh, you know, uh, deployment, uh, investment of funds in the EPF trusts are available in the exempted trust cases. Similarly, should, similar should be the case with the management of funds. Whether where you are managing, keeping this kind of uh, security papers with you, uh, properly protecting it, encashing it in time, and then the whole gamut of fund management needs to be very professionally and uh, you know scientifically organized. You know, granted that uh, there is always likely to be some volatility, some risk. This is area where you cannot escape. We have, we have to, you know, in these economic scenarios are changing, both uh, domestically and globally. These things will definitely have repercussions in all our activities and operations. This we cannot uh, escape. But within these parameters, we must do the best professional job that is possible to secure the long-term retirement funds of all our employees and workers. And I hope that this conference and deliberations here will go a long way in, uh, in achieving our aim of providing the best social security system for India, of which all of us can be extremely proud of, and which will take care of uh, the needs of social security of the population, India, India's population, which is today young population, demographic dividend, everything is fine, but to, tomorrow situation may be different. When times are bad, we should uh, today invest uh, uh, our uh, funds so that uh, when times are bad in future, we are able to take care of the situation. With these words, I would like to remain and I would like to thank you for, thank you SBI um, for giving this opportunity for me to come and interact with you. Thank you very much.